Somehow I convinced my six month pregnant wife to drive down to Florida to collect fish on a vacation so that I could try to breed them. But first I need to explain how we got to this point. Once I saw these Ellison Hoger birds, I knew I wanted to keep them, breed them, and share them with more people. But there was a couple of problems with this fish when it comes to breeding them. First, they are both hard to find in terms of the wild and where they can be collected, as well as finding them online or from other people that are selling them. Second, they don't live very long, only a couple of years. And third, they have extremely small fry. So once you have them, you need to breed them. And if you don't breed them, your colony will die out and you'll be left back at square one of trying to find some more again. Lucky enough for me, I had a friend who had four and gave me some, but those four quickly became three and then quickly became two. Ultimately, I was left with just two males. And I don't know if you ever tried to breed two males before, but it doesn't work out too well. Now I needed more fish, so rather than asking that friend for more fish, I did the sensible thing and convinced my wife to go fish collecting, I mean vacationing down in Florida to collect some brood stock. While down there, I was able to collect 67 individuals and bag them up for the 10 hour journey back home. I collected this many because I had no idea how well they would survive in my tanks and how well they would do traveling. So better to be safe than sorry with the total number that I had. To my utmost surprise, all of them survived the journey and I promptly gave some to friends so that in case mine died or I killed them, I'd have some backup colonies. The first person to breed them wasn't actually me, I was actually the last. Anthony got us to spawn first and then Brandon got his to spawn soon afterwards. Finally, I spawned mine after I did some rearranging of live plants and here's the roller coaster ride that was my first successful attempt at breeding the Elisoma gruberti. So in this frame we have some good news and we have some bad news. We have a Elisoma gruberti male that is dead but we also have a cluster of 10 eggs that are alive right next to him. And I think that this male died while sparring with the dominant male inside of this tank and I think that that sparring resulted in the subdominant male's death. He's colored up in death and in death they are still beautiful but with death comes new life and we have here some Elisoma Gruberta eggs that we are now able to start, be able to mess with and learn more about them. And I'm gonna document this entire journey of raising up these Elisoma Gruberta eggs and how I'm doing them, what I'm doing, their properties and whatnot. The first thing today is that today is January 11th of 2022 and I found them at around four o'clock this afternoon. They're about 10 eggs up in the cluster and that's what the only cluster that I see. And they are at the very top of the tank rather than at the bottom of the tank, which goes along with what I have read before about how they spawn. They like spawning up in the top of the tank in roots or masses of plants, not at the bottom. And they are spawned in a type of algae, a, a hair algae basically, that I do not like, but they obviously do like a lot. So we're gonna be documenting these guys, seeing how long they take to hatch, the temperature of the tank, all these types of things. I believe the temperature of the tank is around 70, one we'll find out here real quick because i have a thermometer so they spawned in 68 degree water in the ph i will check but it's probably around 7.0 6.5 given the substrate and the maintenance on this tank and we'll have to see how they go through i believe these eggs are going to be adhesive um unfortunately i don't think they'll be non-adhesive but we'll have to see as we're taking them out if they fall out or if they stay together in that clump and you can see the male just sort of lurking in the back there uh, just sort of saying like, hey, these are my eggs. So I'm gonna get that dead body removed, but we'll, we'll see how these eggs go. I think I'm gonna put them into the same type of floating containers that I have my Silvestre Podanios eggs in and see how well they hatch and if they fungus over or whatnot. If they do, I'll let you guys know. And if they don't, I'll let you guys know. Either way, this is very exciting. And I can't believe it's only January for, or I can't believe it's only January 11th and we have our first spawn of Elisoma Gerberti eggs. So this is very exciting and uh, hopefully we can start uncracking and unlocking uh, the spawning of these guys so we can start getting some more of these reproduced and out there for people to be able to enjoy and have. So there you can see the Elisoma Gruberti fry that I have. They finally hatched out today is January 14th. It's three days after I noticed the eggs, so it took about three days for them all to hatch. There's probably, I've seen about five or six now swimming around and they're just living in this container that was living in the actual aquarium. So it was just up here in the floating in the top of the tank so that the temperature was still the same and there was no water change, no nothing. And this is now, as I said, three days later. So they are hatching out and are starting to swim around and we'll start uh, trying to feed them some vinegar eels and some microworms as they uh, start getting a little bit larger. But this is super exciting. We have our first batch of Elisoma Gruberti fry. So we are at January 20th now, which is six days post hatch from the 14th. And I'm starting to have some babies die off. I've been trying to feed them live foods the best that I can, as well as prepared foods. But I think the container that I have them right now is just way too small for them. There's one baby here that I believe is still alive. We can check on it. 
yeah, he just moved of his own accord, not of my own accord. Um, but I'm seeing at least a couple um, dead in here for sure. There, if not, maybe more than a couple dead. So I'm gonna have to go back uh, and reevaluate how I'm gonna be preparing food. I'm going to try, I think, to do Walter worm, or I have vinegar eels and Walter worms in here. Or, yeah, vinegar eels and Walter worms in here right now. But I think that those are even too large for them to be eating right now. So there's one along the sidewall here, which I think is also dead. So I think I think the problem is that they're just way too small to start taking um, anything really in terms of maybe brine shrimp or Walter worms. I think I've had to go to vinegar eels or infusoria cultures um, for the next batch that I have. Thankfully, I will have probably more batches to come and we'll learn from these mistakes and hopefully have uh, some better success with the next batch, but this is all learning experience. So huh, it's always, it was, it was great to have them and to get babies and know that I can read them. Now it's just gonna be a, a matter of raising them up to uh, size. And I might have to try some other techniques, uh, but I think, I think I'm going to give the vinegar eels a better chance um, and try this way as well as maybe in a larger container with more of this algae in here to provide more natural grazing for the babies as they emerge. Because I have plenty of that in my tanks. I just need to, um, I think, do a better job of actually feeding them uh, a couple days post act because in the papers that I've read of people that have spawned them, uh, they have about a 20 to 70 percent survival rate. And that's pretty big fluctuations and that's with prepared foods and with baby brine shrimp but I think baby brine shrimp is way too large even in the smallest stages um, for it so you can actually see we'll, we'll find the one lone survivor that I have in here that is still kicking and doing well they're right there in the center frame that's actually free swimming so we might have a couple from this batch that will end up surviving but I think if I really want to breed these guys and actually do it well I'm going to need to get some smaller foods either infusoria or I'm going to try vinegar eels because those are a lot easier to keep long term and I have a couple different ways to get a lot more of them so we'll we'll stay up to date with how these guys do but we're gonna we're gonna try again with the next batch of eggs whenever I find them and try some other things to try to get them to survive uh, a little bit longer than these guys did so I found uh, my first fry in the actual tank here um, in my Ellis Homer Bertai tank here you can see it just here on the front glass and behind here is a spawn that I had, and I have one survivor in here. And I know, I thought I at least collected all of the fry that looked the same size. Um, and they are very similar in size to the ones in here, but this is one that I guess must have escaped and hatched. I had almost all of them die, like I said, earlier in here. And this one here is still surviving and thriving in this tank. You can see dad is over here feeding on some baby brine shrimp and isn't really caring much about him right here. So we'll have to see if we see any more of these little ones around. And this might be the way that I am go is with um, plants or the spawning substrate um, and move the adults uh, between tanks um, or out of tanks and be able to hatch out the, you know, the fry inside of those tanks. And then once they get large enough, after having fed on all, you know, the detritus that is going to be naturally present in this tank, I can then move them and start feeding them baby brine shrimp once they start getting larger. But I thought this is really cool. This is the first one that I've seen in the actual um, tank. And you, can't, you aren't going to be able to see it now. It's going to be like right there. We're not going to be able to see them. Um, but yeah, I just thought I'd share this with you guys. And I think this is the way I'm going to go. So I'm going to start looking at ways to be able to breed them with plants. Um, and yeah. Unfortunately, like I said, you might be able to see the one sole survivor inside of my container here, but probably not very likely as I only have one. And this is a relatively large container for how large they are right now. The one thing that sort of gives me hope that this is a different spawn is that this one in here is entirely free swimming, whereas this one here is still attached onto the glass. So we'll have to see how this plays out if I start seeing more babies inside of the actual tank. Um, or if this is just sort of one-off occurrence. And of course, there's the, the male right there. I don't want to spook them, but you can see two of the Elso Magurti fry right here in the center of the frame. So that must have meant that the spawn that I had in here was the first spawn, and these, this one there, 
and this one there were from a second spawn. So I think I have a breeding male and breeding female in here. And I think what I'm gonna start doing is putting them into um, some planted tanks by themselves and then moving those plants out, putting new plants in every week um, and looking for eggs and um, being able to raise those eggs out to fry in a planted tank with some established substrate that will be hopefully able to grow them and raise them up pretty effectively. So we're gonna keep on feeding these guys the white worms and micro worms to keep them alive in the vinegar eels. And uh, this is really exciting. I thought I had killed my first batch, but it looks like I'm getting another attempt at this. So let's see uh, how this one fares uh, compared to the last one. So I don't know how well you can see that. The glass here has a little bit of algae on it, but there's a tiny little fry in the center of the frame right there that's moving around. And that's the one that I've seen so far. I know that there's probably gonna be other ones in here, but they just are so tiny and just will blend in with the rest of this so very easily. And there's gonna be no chance of seeing them. So I know that they are at least growing up and they are at least getting larger. Um, but to the extent of how many are in here, I have absolutely no idea and I'll be surprised when I start finding uh, more babies as I pull out the adults and move them into other containers. And with that, that's where we'll leave this video with me being able to show you guys that I have raised up some little babies. And this gives me hope for the future and that I can be able to spawn these guys in their own tanks and to be able to raise up their own babies uh, with some smaller types of foods. And that's, that's going to be the next challenge here is to how to breed these guys in mass and be able to have babies survive to the point where I'm having, you know, 70% survival, which would be fantastic. So if you guys want to see how I collected these guys down in Florida, I'll leave that video right now here for you guys and I hope you guys have a blessed day. I'll see you guys over in that one. See ya.